So here we're given a counter current heat exchanger where we have water that's being heated flowing in the center of the tube um, at a mass flow rate of 0.1 kilograms per second and an inlet temperature at 30 degrees Celsius. We then have hot oil on the outside surrounding um, this in the center on the outer shell, um, also flowing at a mass at 0.1 kilograms per second and an inlet temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. We're given the fluid properties, the heat transfer coefficient u, and the inner and outer diameters of this heat exchanger. So the first thing we want to find is the heat that's transferred, Q, and the temperature of the water at the outlet. We're going to say we want to find Q and T water out. So the main idea with heat exchangers is that all the heat that's lost in one fluid is going to be gained in the other fluid, um, which is also equal to the energy that's transferred between the fluids. Um, so essentially what that says, it gives us um, a certain equality that we can say, which is that Q is equal to MCP times delta T for either of the fluids. So that actually gives us two equations where the value of the Q will be exactly the same. This is also equal to UA, so the heat transfer coefficient times the surface area of the two fluids in contact times something called the log mean temperature. Uh, and we'll do a calculation for this um, so we know exactly what this value is. Um, so the first thing we want to do is find the value of Q. In this case, it's actually fairly straightforward because we have the heat capacity, the mass flow rate, um, and the inlet and outlet temperatures of the oil. If we didn't have that, then we would need to set up a different equality um, and basically have equate UA delta T log mean to MCP delta T for either of the fluids. But in this case, we can actually solve for Q directly. Um, and we can do that by saying this is equal to MCP times temperature of the oil in minus temperature of the oil out. Substituting our values, this gives 0 0.1 times 800 times 100 minus 60 degrees, so that's the temperature change. This gives us a Q value of 7,600 joules per second. Okay. Uh, the next thing we want to do is find the outlet temperature of the water. So as we said, this equation, MCP delta T, applies for both fluids. So what we can simply say is that Q is equal to M of the water this time, times CP times temperature of the water out, minus temperature of the water in. And we flip the in and out fraction because I'm basically choosing the hotter temperature minus the cooler temperature because we're looking at the magnitude of heat that's transferred. Uh, which means that temperature of the water out can be isolated with Q over MCP plus temperature of the water in. Uh, this gives us 7600 over 0 0.1 times 4200 plus the initial temperature of 30 degrees Celsius gives us an outlet water temperature of 48.1 degrees Celsius. So the next part of this question that we want to, the next thing we want to calculate is the length that is required of this heat exchanger. Essentially, how much heat that's transferred has to do with the, um, sp the surface area of the two fluids that are in contact. The surface area is just defined as the diameter um, of the inner shell of this heat exchanger times the total length, because that gives us the uh, surface area of a cylinder. Um, so in that case, we can basically write the second part of this equation, which says that Q, again, a value we have, times UA delta T, or Q is equal to UA times delta T log mean, where the area is simply equal to pi d L. So what we want to do is find the temperature, the log mean temperature, um, which is equal to delta T1 minus delta T2 over ln of the ratio of these. Um, and in this case, delta T1 is whatever the temperature difference is on one side of the exchanger. So in this case, it would be the difference between the oil out and the water in. Uh, delta T2, similarly, is the change in temperature or difference in temperature on the other side of the exchanger, um, which is 
the difference between the oil in and the water out uh, for countercurrent flow. If you forget this equation, you can also flip these because if you had delta T2 minus delta T1 over ln of delta T2 over delta T1, um, the negative signs would just cancel out and we'll get the exact same value for the log mean temperature. Um, so here, plugging in our values, we want to know the difference in temperature at each of the ends. So on the first side, we have the oil out being 60 degrees, minus water in is 30. On side two of the exchanger, you have oil in being 100, and water out being 48.1. Divide this by the ln of those differences. So, uh, 60 minus 30 over 100 minus 48.1. And that gives a log mean temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Um, so the last thing we have to do is just simply solve for the length over here. So we've said that Q is equal to UA times delta T log mean, which is equal to U pi DL delta T log mean. Isolating for L, we have Q over U pi D delta T log mean, um, subbing in all our values gives 7600 over 60 times pi times the inner diameter is what's important to us, 0 0.025 times the temperature difference is, or uh, log mean temperature is 40. And this gives us a final exchanger length of 40.3 meters.